In this Baldur's Gate 3 video, we're going to be talking about Update 9, which is the newest patch for Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access that adds not only level 5 to the game, but also the Paladin class, along with UI changes, balancing fixes, and bug fixes as well. Level 5 is such an important change to the game, I cannot understate how big this is. It drastically changes the way combat is played for every class in Baldur's Gate 3. Not only are most martial classes going to gain an extra attack, allowing them to do two attacks per turn in combat, which is going to make them much more effective, but also make their combat turns much more interesting because positioning factors into this. Where are they going to move? Who are they going to attack each turn if they have two attacks? Planning exactly where they go, who they attack, what order they attack in. It's going to make combat more dynamic for them, but also spellcasters will gain access to their level 3 spells, giving them all new spells to cast and more spell slots, allowing them a wider variety of things that they can do in combat, which just drastically changes the way combat will play in Baldur's Gate 3. I think if you're a Baldur's Gate 3 fan who hasn't played the Early Access for some months now or over a year, something like this, you should absolutely come back for this one change alone. It'll change so much of the way that the combat is in Baldur's Gate 3 that I think you'll have a completely different experience and you'll enjoy it much more. Probably my only complaint so far with Baldur's Gate 3 is that the combat is slower than Divinity, there are less options than Divinity, and that's just the nature of D&D 5th edition in general, so that's not something that's like a fault of Larian or anything like that, it's just the nature of this rule set, and getting to this level is going to make it so much better, I cannot wait to check this out. On top of that, if you wanted a more compelling case to try this out again, Paladin has been added to the game along with three subclasses, you have Oath of the Ancients, you have Oath of Devotion, and of course the Oathbreaker subclass, if you decide to break your oath. Just to kind of touch upon these subclasses briefly before we get into them in more depth in our Paladin video, which you guys can look forward to very shortly, the Oath of the Ancients is sort of a nature-focused Paladin that actually gains access to some of the abilities of the Druid. For instance, it gains like Moonbeam at level 5, and you'll be able to talk to animals at level 3. So if you wanted something that's kind of in the middle between a Paladin and a Druid, then or maybe a little bit more martial-focused than a Druid, then this is not a bad choice for you. Oath of Devotion is a more protection-oriented Paladin class that not only can heal, but also has protection spells that will help protect their group. So if you want to play a Paladin that's also very into preventing things happening from your group or just kind of being that shield that helps buff and prevent damage from your group, then that is a good choice for you. And then lastly, you have the Oathbreaker subclass, which is available to any Paladin that breaks their oath. And this is kind of a darker Paladin subclass. It has some Warlock spells, it has some Cleric spells, has a focus on controlling undead. So it's definitely something that you would play if you were trying to play like a darker type paladin. Beyond level 5 and adding paladin to the game, there are some other major changes happening to the game. I'm going to go through some of these, as well as some of the balancing changes and bug fixes. I'm not going to go through all of these, but we will have them all in this video if you want to read through them. There's just so much to this patch that if I went through every single point, specifically, it would be an hour-long video. And I don't think anyone wants to watch a video quite that long. So first, notably, the reaction system has been revamped. We haven't gotten to test this, so this is something you should test out when you get into the new patch and see how it works. I know Larian has been doing a lot of work on this throughout the updates, trying to get it exactly right. It is one of the more complicated systems in the game, so I'm not sure this will be the final version of the reaction system, but it's definitely one they've been working on, and I'm curious to see how this will play out. Another important point is that they've added new spells and spell scrolls. This will obviously be because of the level 3 spells being added to the spell casting classes, so you can look out for those. Their spell list will obviously be on the wiki as well as in-game if you want to see what those are. Another important point to note is that tooltips have been overhauled once again. This is, I think, the second or third time they've overhauled them to add what happens if you miss or if the target saves or if the target needs to do an ability check, etc. So... There's going to be a lot more information in the tooltips that I think will help explain to players what these spells are. So if you're not like a D&D &D enthusiast and you're not real familiar with them, you'll be able to understand what their effects are going to be either way. And probably the last notable point here is that they've rebalanced combat encounters in the late Act 1 area of the game. I'm assuming this is because now that you're level 5 and you're going to have more spells and more attacks with martial characters that it'll be way too easy if they don't rebalance it. And I imagine it was intended for you to be level 5 when you got to these areas anyway. You just couldn't because of the restriction of early access. And now that that's been lifted, this is probably necessary in order to make the game still competitive in those points. So you don't just face roll everything. So when it comes to the balancing of the game, the first thing that they've done is tweak the AI. So that animals and humans have distinctly different AI. 
as well as like you know attacks from certain characters they will know that they will have a low chance to succeed so they'll do something else they've also made updates to npcs deciding when to shove you to their death i don't know if they've made this less often or more often that's a scary thought and they've also made it so that uh npcs are more patient and smarter with their healing spells so they heal things that have lower hp so just generally speaking the ai of combat should be a bit better than it was before there are some more specific balancing changes to certain characters in the game most of these seem to be increasing their level or increasing their stats in order to accommodate the fact that you're going to be level five at this point so i think you don't really need to run through all of them but essentially these characters will be a higher level which will make these combat encounters harder which won't probably be harder in the grand scheme of things because you're level five but it'll be about the same give or take a couple other notable changes in terms of balancing is that when you're hiding, shove now grants an advantage roll instead of succeeding automatically, so you can't just go into hiding and then shove someone to their death, easy peasy. Now you'll have an advantage roll, which should still make you succeed more often than not, but it'll be harder to do. And another change is the Sapphire Spark equipment item that used to add 1d4 force damage to your magic missile spells now just adds an extra dart instead of adding the damage bonus so this really nerfs how much damage that equipment item does that was a really really strong equipment item so i'm not surprised to see this change and lastly the bard action cutting words has had it so that when it critically strikes its damage reduction penalty hasn't been doubled so it's not going to be twice as good if you critically hit when using it a couple of gameplay tweaks first one is that waypoints are easier to click this is nice that was kind of an issue for me uh, they've also updated the suggested cantrips for High Elves and half elf Sorcerers, Warlocks, and Wizards. That's interesting. I'm not sure why they did that, but I can't wait to get into the game and see. Party members no longer copy each other's lines in multiplayer. I haven't really played this game much multiplayer, so I didn't know that was a thing, but that's a good change in my opinion. That would get annoying after a long period of time. A couple of Warlock changes. The Great Old One now has access to Phantasmal Force, the spell, and they also have access to the Warlock feature, Mortal Reminder, which wasn't previously in the game. Additionally, the Warlock feature Agonizing Blast is now added by default to Eldritch Blast, meaning that it's going to free up a choice for most Warlocks. Most all of them would always choose that in character development, so now they're going to have another slot available to choose something else. There are just so many changes in this patch, adding new sound effects, changing visual properties, fixing bugs, adding class features. It would be too long for me to go through every single one of these, so if you want to read through them, we will have these at the end of the video up so you can read through them all. There is absolutely a ton added to this, but my advice, if you don't want to sit there and read through it all, is just install the patch, boot up the game, and see how it plays to you now. Not only are we, do we get the Paladin class, which is something new you can try out, but level 5 will drastically change every single class that you've played before, particularly once you hit that level 5 mark, so the sooner you do that, the more dynamic gameplay is going to be, and you should just go play it. I mean, there's absolutely no reason to check it out unless you are just done it so many times already and even then i feel like this is a big enough change to warrant playing again even if you're someone like me who's played through early access like a dozen times already and with the addition of the paladin that means that the only remaining class not in the game is the monk and of course multi-classing still hasn't been added so those are the two things i would expect in the next update if there is one before the game's launch in august i think that's such a far distance away that it would be weird if we didn't see at least one more update between now and then but I think you could probably expect those two things to be added at that point, which will give you a grand idea of how the game in general will play if that, of course, happens. All in all, I can't believe the amount of work that's gone into Baldur's Gate 3 at this point. Larian has just done such a thorough and fantastic job trying to make this game as close to 5th edition D&D as possible while still making it an enjoyable video game and changing the things that make sense when you're playing in a video game setting and I mean, this game's been in development for such a long time. We saw this game, I think, at least three years ago with Larian when they first debuted it. And they've been working on it all this time. And to know that it's coming out next August or sometime next fall, absolutely phenomenal. I cannot wait to see the finalized version of this game. I cannot think of a game in recent memory that had so much work put into it, except maybe like The Witcher 3, and that game was absolutely outstanding. In terms of things you can expect to see from us, we're obviously going to be updating the wiki with all this information, so that'll all be there. We're going to be putting out uh, updated class guides for these classes. We'll be updating the ones we have. We'll putting out new videos for each class, and of course the Paladin. I'm talking about some other aspects of the game, perhaps even doing a getting started guide again for those interested. I expect a lot of people to come back 
to the early access that haven't played in a while because there isn't you know new content per se to play but this drastically changes the way people are going to play early access level 5 being added i think a lot of people will be interested in that let me know what you guys are interested in. Would you guys like to see this sort of stuff? What changes are you most looking forward to? Did I miss anything that's like really important? Or did I get it all? Let me know in the comments below. We'll